Hi everyone, Yu Sensei here. Archery is a beautiful art. And speaking of art, check out this channel. Stuff by Sunshine is a Melbourne based children's book illustrator and an up and coming YouTube channel. She creates bright and attractive watercolour paintings, weaves amazing stories and anecdotes, and runs workshops for schools. We have a very exciting and unique collaboration coming up with her channel. Subscribe to Stuff by Sunshine to be the first to see it and the rest of her amazing work. Now I mentioned archery and art together because, as you know, archery is a very popular subject in art, both historical and in modern depictions. Especially today with so many references to pop culture, people are fascinated and interested in drawing archers and bows in action. And given that as artists you might have a lot of insecurities about your work, you don't really need more people jumping onto you for getting things wrong. So this video is here to provide some insight to the accuracy of drawing archery with a bit more technical accuracy. Whether you are a traditional painter, a digital artist, a 3D modeler, even a photographer, you may find some of these tips to be quite relevant to your field and hopefully helpful in your artistic pursuits. I want to start this with a quick preface. This is by no means a comprehensive list of rules that you have to follow when you're illustrating archery. There is plenty of room for creativity and you should explore different avenues to illustrate the art of archery. This is more for people who are a bit more curious about why things are done and perhaps impress a few more people with your technical know-how. We're going to begin by talking about the bow itself and this is in relation to the shape of the bow and the design of the bow. Perhaps the simplest kind of bow to illustrate is the long bow. Now if you imagine yourself as a young kid drawing a stick figure and you drew a bow that was basically like a D shape, that's basically what a long bow is. Long bows are really Distinctly simple, both in real life design and in illustration. So, this is very much a valid bow to draw. Um, like I said, all it is is basically uh, a stick in a D shape with a string, and that's a longbow. This particular bow is a Victorian era English longbow, but it's the kind of bow which is commonly depicted in fantasy sources. So, if you have, say, a forest ranger, they are most likely to be using a bow like this. So taking a closer look, you can see the bow has a very simple shape and design. Uh, all it is is a bit of a curve. Uh, you might have a bit of a fancy grip. Now traditionally bows didn't have grips, but again, being artistic and creative, you can have some kind of leather wrapping or grip here. And again, with the bottom end of the bow, more or less a simple curve. Uh, quick tip here, and this will be relevant later on as well, uh, do take note of where the string is placed on the limbs. Uh, some people think the string goes straight on the very end of the tip. In actuality, there is a notch carved into the end where the string is looped around. So in practice, the string is actually not exactly on the tip. When you de-illustrate the bow strings, you might want to have a slight gap between the end of the bow and where the string begins. Now, if you want to get a little fancier, you might want to add a bit of curvature to the bow. And you'll see this quite often in fantasy designs, where the bows have a bit of a reflex. Now, if you take this to the extreme, you go from the long bow to the recurve bow. And in this case, you can see the limbs are curved away from the archer, hence recurve. Now, the recurve bow, and especially this kind of bow shape and design, is perhaps the most familiar with archers today. Uh, this is commonly seen in pop culture and the most common bow type used by people today. This particular one is a traditional bow but has a modern design so it has things like a more ergonomic shaped grip uh, and it's modular so this takedown you can take these apart for storage and swap things out but more or less this is a recurve bow which most people today would easily recognize. And again, a bit of a close-up for the bow shape. We have the a very distinct curvature of the limbs. We have the central uh, part of the bow, or the riser. Um, depending on the bow type, if you have a one-piece traditional bow, this might be a very narrow design, but the modern bows tend to be a bit chunkier, uh, mostly for weight, balance, and grip. And going to the bottom limb, again, we see that it narrows or thins out to form the limb. Uh, 
Uh, limbs are meant to be thin and light, so you wouldn't really have the bulk of the bow on the limbs. You would have the bulk in the middle of the bow. Again, depending on what design element you're going for. Now, if you want to go for something a little more exotic, you have the composite bows, also known as Asiatic bows or horse bows. And this is more commonly known in the Eastern cultures, so Persia, China, Mongolia, uh, Korea, and so on. So the defining feature of these bows is that they tend to be quite short, not always, but they have very distinct limb curvature, especially um, these pronounced tips or ears, which are known as seers. Uh, these seers are the defining feature of the Eastern style bows. Um, they are used differently to Western bows, uh, but you often see these um, used in art to illustrate an exotic style of warrior, again, often inspired by Oriental sources, um, and that's what it looks like. So close up of the design features of an Eastern style bow, uh, you have the very pronounced seers, which are mostly wooden, um, sometimes they're made from horn. Uh, you have sometimes a string bridge, not always. Uh, some designs have no bridge, it simply contacts the uh, edge of the limb here, but some designs do have a bridge. Um, that's again a bit of a design choice for you. Um, often these bows have very uh, fancy wrappings and designs, and again these are very short bows. You can have longer ones, um, but these are mostly designed to be shot from horseback and to be very light and portable. So if you're creating a character that's meant to be very mobile, then this sort of thing might be more appealing. Um, and like I said, this is the exotic option for most character designs. Uh, many archers are more familiar with the traditional bows, like the long bows and recurves, whereas the Asiatic bows uh, tend to be more foreign and different to most uh, readers and uh, viewers. In terms of decorating your bows in your designs, uh, like I said, there's plenty of room for decoration. You can have engravings or markings, you can have wrappings. There's a lot you can get away with. Of course, a functional bow doesn't need all this, but to make it fancier, there's plenty of options to make it brighter, more colorful, and more unique. If there's any mistake that's common in bow design, which makes things look a little ridiculous, it would be the addition of too many things, especially on the limb tips. Uh, the reason is the limb tips are meant to be light because this is the part which springs back and propels the arrow forward. So by pulling the string back, you have a lot of curvature. If you have too many things on the limbs, for example, like metal spikes or things sticking out, then it does actually slow down the limb, which hampers performance. That would probably never be done in a real bow. Uh, if you want to include fancier metal decorative elements, make it closer to the handle or the grip. That way it has less effect on the bow itself. Uh, the limbs should be as light as possible. So uh, again, not a really big deal, but it makes more technical sense to minimize um, weight on the limb tips. The other thing you should be really mindful of is which way the bow is braced. And this is especially true for photography. As a matter of practicality and safety, we don't normally keep our bow strung. So we normally keep them unstrung, that way it's basically disassembled. Now, that's what it looks like when it's unstrung. And very often when people go to photo shoots or do cosplays, uh, they don't have the bow strung and they don't know how to string the bow. And the result is the model doing something <laughs> like this. This is one of the biggest annoyances which people have when doing archery. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera right now and I'm, I'm kind of like getting a little sick inside because this is so common and actually really bad for the bow. That is really not what it looks like. People think it does look like this because the limbs are curving towards the archer, but they're actually meant to be curving away. So when people do this, we all cry a little inside. Please don't do this. Uh, it, sometimes people don't know, fair enough, but if you're doing it like this, then you're doing it horribly wrong. To the point where you might actually damage the bow if you have it strung and you're pulling it back this way. Bows aren't meant to bend like that, so just be careful, you might ruin somebody's bow. So again, this is what it's meant to look like when fully braced and drawn correctly. Now, something else I want to briefly mention, which is also quite important and a common mistake, is how to draw the string. Now, look, you don't have to be fancy with the string. If you want to draw a straight line, 
that's your string, that's completely fine. Now, the misconception that many people have is that the string is an elastic band. So as you pull it, it stretches and gets longer. That's definitely not how a bowstring works. Uh, I have seen examples of artwork where the character is holding the bow and the string is like three times as long when they're pulling it back. Bows aren't slingshots. The string doesn't stretch more than it has to. The way the bow works is that the string pulls the limbs back, and this is something else to watch out for. The shape of the bow isn't static. What it looks like when you're holding it like this without pulling it back is different to when you do pull it back. And take note of how the limbs curve backwards or move backwards and move forwards as I let it go. I'm going to have to uh, kneel a bit to get it in frame, but just imagine this, okay? So I've got the bow here, watch the limb tips, full draw, moves back quite substantially, and then back to original brace. Again, full draw, and to brace. So that's how the bow works. The limbs bend back and snap forward to propel the arrow. You don't really see the string changing in length. It's more or less the same length, but the curvature does change. And this effect is much more obvious on a shorter bow. So again, it's gonna crouch down a bit here. Pay attention to the limb tips. We're gonna get a full draw and see how much it curves when you pull it back. And back to its original position and curved. And this is again one of the reasons why these bows tend to be very popular for uh, illustrating exotic styles because the extreme curvature is something that's visually very appealing. The next common mistake is how to hold the string. I'm not gonna lie, this is perhaps the part where most people get wrong when illustrating archery. There are actually many different ways to hold the string, but we'll go through the most common ones. And just quickly, as an artist, I know that drawing hands is everyone's least favorite part. If you're drawing mittens, fair enough, but getting the fingers right is an art in itself. So I'll try to provide as many references as possible. The most common and recognizable way of holding the string is what's called the Mediterranean grip. Basically, you have three fingers on the string in a hook shape. That's basically it. So once more, as a quick reference, uh, most people would put the string on the first joint of their fingers. They'll form a hook like this and they'll place it on the string like that. And from the other side, Again, three fingers, first joint around there, hook it around, and that's the correct grip. With the arrow as a reference point, most people will have one finger over the arrow and two fingers under the arrow. This is by far the most common way to shoot using this grip. So again, that's the grip from the back and the grip with the front of the hand. Drawing the bow back. and a bit of a front view. On a similar note, another important point in archery is the anchor point. People who shoot with aim shots and shoot accurately will use a physical contact point on the face to draw the bow back to. In this case, I'm using my cheek at the corner of my mouth. So this is very common in archery in real life. You draw it back and you have a touch on your jaw or your cheek or your eye, somewhere near there, so that you have a consistent reference point. Um, I mention this because quite a few people will illustrate arches with very long floating anchors, especially in 3D modeling, where you can't quite get the alignment right. So um, you often see people draw arches like this, they draw it back down here or something. Um, again, if you're creating a hero character and they can automatically hit everything, Fair enough, but really, if you're going for a skilled, trained archer, they're probably gonna shoot like this, rather than out here. Now, again, going with the exotic options, if you're depicting an oriental-inspired archer, they would be using what we call a thumb draw, where you use the thumb to draw the string back. Again, this is not commonly known in many Western cultures and pop culture, but it is a very common way of shooting with a bow. Now, unlike the Mediterranean draw, which has three fingers on the string, the thumb draw has one finger, the thumb. And the way it looks from this side is you have the thumb hooked around the string, and you usually have the index finger 
locked over the fingernail like this so that's kind of what it looks like quite simply and with a proper grip that's what it looks like it looks like a fist from this angle so by doing a thumb draw loop thumb around finger on and then you can pull it back all the way here and from the other side thumb hooked around finger over and you have this kind of grip much more easy with a thumb ring or a glove but i'm not using one right now but that's what it looks like you pull it back like that something worth quickly mentioning is that if you do illustrate arches after the shot then pay attention to the position of the hand especially when comparing a mediterranean release versus a thumb draw the last common mistake that we'll cover is which side of the bow the arrow goes on and this is quite controversial not because there's a right and wrong but people think there's a right and wrong and this is actually quite easy to address if you're shooting with the mediterranean draw with the fingers and you're right-handed the arrow goes on the left side of the bow if you're shooting eastern style with the thumb draw then the arrow goes on the right side of the bow and again i point this out because many westerners find this to be wrong and the opposite to what they're used to so don't take this as a criticism from people who don't know this is the correct way to depict an asian archer using a thumb draw now for some reason people take these sides as absolute look if you're left-handed you flip these around thumb draw with left hand means the arrows on the left side and if you shoot with your fingers then it goes on the right side now those were the most common ways to illustrate shooting methods there are a couple of uncommon unorthodox methods as well one of them is a two finger draw which you often see in artwork uh, this is definitely viable it is a variation of the mediterranean draw uh, less common in real life but it is done and it definitely works the other unorthodox method which you do sometimes see is an inverse grip uh, especially with two fingers uh, this can work it can be done in real life but it's a little unusual it's more of an artistic flair than anything else and you don't find many people doing this that's basically all i want to cover uh, that should cover most of the technical inaccuracies which might bother some people like i said there is plenty of room for creativity there are a lot of things you can get away with but if you want to have that extra element of technical accuracy then hopefully this will help if you have any further questions feel free to post in the comments below or send me an email if you'd like to send some draft artwork for me to do a critique then i'm quite happy to look at it and if there's anything i missed that you think might be quite important to include feel free to add in the comments below anyway this is new sensei hope you found this interesting and helpful thank you for watching and i'll see you next time